What's up folks, Mr. B here and um, <laughs> there is an issue that I really want to amplify a little bit because you know it's been drawing some heat this whole business of secondary schools in Jamaica who have been pursuing this policy of importing youngsters into the secondary school system uh, largely for gathering points or you know, participation in sporting activities offered by Jamaica's secondary school system, most notably CHAPS and to a lesser extent, Manning Cup football. Now, let me make it clear. I'm a KCU old boy and me loyal to my school, to the core. If you caught me, preferably me bleed purple blood. Beyond that though, I'm a Jamaica and I'm nationalistic to the core. Now, a lot of my contemporaries at KC, uh, you know, don't share my views, and I can deal with that. I, I, I really don't share. I, it, it doesn't really matter to me whether or not people share my views. But my views are grounded in, you know, what I consider to be common sense reasoning and nationalism. Now, let me put it this way. As I said, I'm a KC old boy. And so, I went to KC in 1969 and left in 74. And, you know, I remember when I went into KC, the thing that we learned about the school was that Bishop Percival William Gibson, who founded the school in 1925, his objective was to create an academic institution that would aid in providing for education for poor black Jamaican young boys. Me, I, that's, that's me, all right? And, and so while we are on the cusp of a hundred years of that ethos laid down by the you now late Bishop Percival William Gibson, I don't believe that Jamaica is too far away from where we were there in terms of the inequity that still exists within our education system. Add to that, Jamaica is a poor country, poor no hell, right? We are the second poorest country in the Caribbean archipelago, right? Haiti may not be participating in these activities that we're talking about, and but by you know by far Haiti is among the, one of the poorest countries in the world, and certainly the poorest country in the Caribbean region with a, a GDP of 1,900 US dollars. Now, right behind them comes Jamaica with a GDP of just about 6,050 US dollars. Belize follows with a GDP of roughly 7,000 um, US dollars. And then behind them comes Grenada, 9,600 US. St. Lucia, 13,000. Um, Antigua, 19,000. Trinidad and Tobago, 19,000. To be exact, Antigua is 19,900. Trinidad, 19,600. Guyana, 18,200. Uh, Turks and Caicos, 24,900. And then there's the Bahamas with $31,450. What is significant about all of these numbers is that Jamaicans are going down into the Caribbean region. And, and you know, Jamaican high schoolers and, you know, the big ones are Jamaica College, certainly Kingston College, and, and there are others. And they are recruiting athletes. In fact, only recently, JC announced that they're granting a scholarship to this youngster from Belize who is a long jumper. And so this youth is set to come to Jamaica in September where I think he will start in Fort Farm. So that youngster is good in the school system for at a minimum two years if he decides to continue into Sixth Farm and have the ability to probably do another four years. Now, again, all of these territories that I mentioned are in a better position financially in respect of their GDP than Jamaica, right? 
And so by being in a better position, these countries can more than provide for their own nationals, their, uh, you know, uh, secondary, primary, secondary education for their nationals better than we are able to afford it, right? We are a country that suffers all of the vicissitudes of what we call education apartheid. Only about 20% of Jamaicans in the secondary school system really gains anything from what we have on offer as education. So when you have top um, institutions of the ilk of my own KC, Jamaica College, Calabar, the, all of these schools that name I'm calling are, you know, rank among the top 25 um, secondary schools in Jamaica. And it cost, according to the analyst, some $225,000 to, to give a youngster a, a secondary education in Jamaica on an annual basis. So when you bring a man from wherever, and he, he are, uh, are woman, because all of them doing it with well, some of the girls them too. They, they come into the school system. They are costing, they cost the country 230,000. Now, there's an argument that say, oh, they're not costing anything because they, they, the past students association or those who are providing these scholarships are funding. But it is a cost because if we agree that Jamaica, in a dire straits in terms of its economy, right? We're in a dire straits in terms of how the how the disparity between schools and the educational offerings and their ability to turn out a properly educated child, right? In the same way and the same efforts that we make to go down into the Caribbean region and in instances, and KC guilty of this, as far as Africa, to go find youngsters to bring into the secondary school system, we could apply those efforts to turn over every stone in a Jamaica, right? To find the kind of talent that we are bringing in to the, the, the system. We can find them there in Jamaica. I'll give you a case in point. The, 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 the youngster that won the 5,000 meters at Champs, this past Champs here, right? ran something like just under 16 minutes, right? He never broke the record. That record has been in existence since 2010, right? 2010. And, and this record was held by, in fact, the 1500 and the 5000 meters record are two records held by a youngster from Belfield High School, right? And, and those records have been in existence since 2010. So it is not that the country can produce long distance runners at the junior level. What it is, is that we are lazy as Jamaicans. And so rather than do the groundwork, which is what has gotten us this far, Champs, at the end of the, the last um, edition of Champs, turned 214 years old, well, sorry, 114 years old. So for the last 114 years, what we have been doing all of a sudden is not good enough, right? This is the same sport that has produced the greats, the quarries, the, the Lennox Millers, the you know, the, 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 the Wints, etc., right? The, 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 the Herb McKinley's, right? The Usain Bolts, Shelley and Fraser Price, Elaine Thompson, Veronica Campbell. This is the same champs that's been producing these athletes. And in the days of those athletes, there was no thought about importing, right? Yeah, some of the athletes afterwards went on to college overseas, Herb McKinley and, and a couple of others. But the fact is they are homegrown talent, homegrown by coaches who are developed inside of Jamaica, right? And this is even before we got to the GC Foster College of Sports, which is now turning out coaches that dime a dozen, right? You want to develop a, a, a distance athletic program? Let's go to Africa then, since we want to go so far. And why don't we go to Africa and bring some of these top coaches to come to GC Foster and teach our coaches in, at GC Foster how to produce distance runners? 
that's better money spent, right? Instead, we bring a youth, we have him a run in a race, we double lap most of the competitors, and we believe that that is raising the bar. It's not that him come and him broke the record and broke the record so much times. I'm sure say him far better than anything Jamaica has produced. Him can't even run close to the boy from Belfield record, right? But we can justify this. Worse, we are bringing people from down in the islands for run sprints. Jamaica is a sprint country, right? We're not short of producing sprinters, but we are bringing one of them track team. I mean, I'll call the name again. The, but half of the track team are the sprinters, them are where run the you know two, one, two, or four, and, and eight hundred. Them come from over yonder. These are young people who they're gonna come in from wherever. So some of them, the one them look from Africa, they look so young at all. But them come and they may win some races at champs. Right? They have occupied three years in the secondary school system at a cost. To the country, whether it's the old boy them or whatever, pay for it. The fact is they now pay the teachers. And it's the teachers who are doling out that effort to provide an education for a youngster who, when him done, him gone. And the country doesn't benefit from that. Had we taken the same approach and go and turn over every stone all over and around Jamaica to find these hidden gems that are there, right? And wash them off, provide them with some remedial stuff to get them into the system, give them the exposure so they can understand what the ethos is of Forty Scattery, Cedary, or work is burning in the field, or whatever the motto is, wherever, utmost for the high, whatever, right? So they can develop from having experienced that ethos and pass that on to their own generations of children and grandchildren that they will bring through the system in intervening years, right? Instead, what we have done, we have decided to do is that we go down to Trinidad, we go to Barbados and wherever we can find these youngsters and we provide them with scholarships and we, we beat our chest to say that, oh, we are helping to develop the track and field in the region. That is the biggest piece of bullshit I've heard in my entire 66 years, right? You want to help develop track and field in Trinidad and wherever else in the region? Let's take some of the experts that we have in the island and take them down to Trinidad and those islands who have the resources that they can spend to develop their own um, secondary school track program. Do that. Help them with that. Right, and then utilize the, the 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 you know events like Carifta Games and Gibson Relays and bring them in to come and 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 rub shoulders with the Jamaicans and give Jamaicans a taste of that international competition, right? But instead, we are content to give away, give away resources that we do not have. We are investing in the underdevelopment of our own country, retarding the development of our own country. Let me put it another way. Our secondary school system is built on a, the, the principle of youngsters graduate through PEP. It used to be um, GSAT or whatever it was, common entrance. They, they are filtered into the secondary school system through those um, examinations. Now, you know, prior to that, these youngsters are attending prep and primary schools. These prep and primary schools have their own sporting arrangements, primary school champs, prep school champs, and so on. And so these youngsters within these institutions, these prep and primary institutions, are demonstrating their own talent and abilities and are looking forward to be able to, once they get into the secondary school system, whether they go KC, Calabar, whoever the big school them is, and out of the country to that, to Diego and the rest of them. They want to go and run for them school, right? They want to build, you know, to experience that, the, you know, the, the, that, that whole ethos 
of representing their schools. It don't matter that some of them will, will have less talent than others, you know, right? But this is what they are getting into these secondary schools with an, a, a desire to do. And just when them getting right to be able to make that contribution, third form into fourth form for class three, the geniuses who have the resources believe that what well, we can let's bring in two or three or four boy from St. Lucia, from Grenada, and, and we're going to bring them in, right? With a view because with them coming in as athletes, you know, so obviously their focus is to put them in that attractive, right? And we are trying to tell other Jamaicans that these people are not displacing young Jamaicans who are homegrown, who live here, who go through the secondary, the, the primary school and prep school system to get into these secondary schools. Pretty soon, if we continue like this, you're going to end up where champs have some of the school, them half, or if not all of them, them athletes are foreigners. So what are we doing? The very same thing that we have demonstrated our ability at, that we're very good at. We are now turning on like a cow who get a pail of milk and fling your foot in it and kick it over. How does Jamaica benefit from us bringing these youngsters in from overseas, providing them with an education that we don't have enough money to stop a stale bread card to provide, right? And don't, again, don't tell me, say, these scholarship providers are them are pay fee because they now pay the teacher them, right? They now pay for the the, 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 the the you know the investment that all these teachers have to make to, to provide this education to youngsters who at the end of their school time supposed to be joining the work world in Jamaica to help build Jamaica. How do we, we benefit from that? Look at the youth we bring from mostly one of them, Turks and Caicos, one of them island, right? In Coma Jamaica, in Goa Casey. God know if him pass anything or KC, but him end up around for England. Who benefit from that? How did Jamaica benefit? How does Jamaica benefit by giving away the scarce resources that we have that we could append it to the development of another poor Jamaica, right? Is it that is only me alone a seat away there? Eh? And don't tell me about America if we if we are talking about we now give the youth them no scholarship for come at Jamaica or the same thing with happen in America if them stop the Jamaican scholarship. A bullshit argument that again. The United States, the attempt to conflate one with the other is a is a is an indication, a demonstration of density, academic thinking density. America is a big metropolitan capitalist country. They have more money than sense. Most of these institutions, they thrive. They want the talent from Jamaica. And they come and, and scout it. Because they have the money for pay for it. And it's not displacing anybody in America. Right? America is not even a track country. So they are using Jamaicans to raise the, 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 the exposure of, of their own institutions. So they can attract others all over the world. Right? So to conflate one with the other is a lack of thought, a, a, an inability to critically analyze. It is almost treasonable, if you will, that you are going to take what you don't have and give it away to people after they have received it. They won't be around for you to gain any benefit whatsoever from. Tell me on the thing, my women. Right? Tell me if I'm wrong. Right? Where me come from, you know, me a poor youth come from poor background. KC made me who I am. Right? That is not to say that I am against KC winning anything. KC don't even need these points to bring these people in to win with anything. Let us let us take those resources that we have so much out down at KC and go down in the rural areas and let us find these youngsters wherever they are because the talent is there, right? And if we want to provide these youngsters with a space in the school system to make a contribution, let us make that investment 
that is a much more long-term investment in the real development, not only of Kingston College or the school system, but of Jamaica. Because whether, when these youngsters come to school in a Jamaica as Jamaicans and then get a chance to show them ability on the track or on the football field, get a scholarship, go somewhere else, who want them to come there because they can afford to pay for it and, and put them up. When they're finished with their tertiary studies, they're coming right back home. They're coming home with whatever skills they have gathered, wherever they go. And even if they don't come back, they are still channeling resources back to Jamaica that made them. It is almost idiocy to think otherwise, right? So tell me if you think that what I'm saying don't make any sense, right? Tell me one thing. Again, let me make it clear. Me is a KC man. So be careful. Yeah? Me, me KC to the core, right? Me not have nothing against KC. That death will bring me. It is because of my belief in the ethos of KC why I, why I am so emotional about this thing. Because I know, I, I, I grew up amongst poor youth who is the opportunity them get to come through the gate at 2A North Street that turned them in a who them is. What is, is a, a little surprising is that among those who are now, you know, executing these strategies are some of those same people. It's almost as if they might forget where they might come from. You have a responsibility, brethren, sisters, wherever you're there, as a Jamaican, to look out for your own nationals first. Let us bring Jamaica to a level where, yes, we are now in a better position to afford just about anything that we think. And when we reach this up, then we can turn on and say to those who are lesser than us, come, come. But you can't do that until you can do it, until we are in the financial position, until we are at that socioeconomic developmental position. We can't do that. The limited resources that we have, we need to focus it on our own development. And when we have tipped those skills, then we can look around and say, all right, make we simple. Tell me one thing, you know, tell me. Tell me if you don't disagree with me. I think. But I'm here from you. You know, like, share the, the thing. I mean, let me see the feedback in the comment section of the video. Right? Respect.